Oh my goodness. And there it is. Wow, get the chicken to go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bowl TV for continued coverage of the 2021 U.S. Women's Open from Double Decker Lanes in Rohnert Park, California. My name is Aaron Smith with Bowl TV, and we are ready for the final round of match play here at the 2021 USWO. We have 48 games in the books for our 24 competitors, and after the next eight games, we will know the five players advancing to the CBS Sports Network Step ladder finals taking place tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. And of those five, one of them is going to take home the top prize, $100,000. And the coveted green jacket that is awarded to the champion. We had an absolutely crazy, unbelievable, ridiculous round earlier today. There is absolutely nothing settled yet, folks. From first to fifth right now, 51 pins separated them. From first to eighth, 96 pins. So eight players within 100 pins of not just the show, of the lead. Shannon Pluhowski took over the overall top spot uh, in the final game over Sherry Tan. Shannon O'Keefe jumped into second place as well. So the current top five at the moment, Shannon Pluhowski, Shannon O'Keefe, Sherry Tan, Valerie Bersier, and Josie Barnes. The first player out, Stephanie Zavala, 10 pins back. Shayna Ung, 40 pins back of the top five at the moment. Our defending champion, Danielle McCune. Also within striking range, 71 pins back. The big mover and shaker, though, in match play so far through the first two rounds has been Valerie Bersier. She kicked things off in 22nd place and now is all the way up to fourth. She has averaged more than 217 through 16 games and has put together an 11 to 3 and 2 mark uh, to take advantage of the bonus pins out there as well. Now, folks, we're getting ready to start competition here in just a quick second. Our athletes are getting their final warm-up shots on their starting pairs before uh, they get into their matches. Uh, so since we have the opportunity, we're going to bring in on-site from Double Decker Lanes, another member of the Bull TV crew, Emil Williams Jr., EWJ. How's it going? Oh, man. It is time, baby. It's time. It's We need uh, Michael Buffer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. to announce and uh, be the PA for what is – going to be uh what an excellent round certainly for those of you watching certainly are, are we got plenty watching right now think about your favorite favorite and worst roller coaster experience <laughs> your favorite roller coaster and then your worst ever experience because it, for for several players it's going to be their favorite and for some it's going to be the worst uh, the the emotions, the dips, the the dives, the twists and the turns, the quick lefts, the quick rights uh, could make you want to vomit or you get off saying, I want to get back in, in line immediately. That's the kind of emotions that are going to be running through and are already kind of running through uh, here in the building, Aaron. So uh, unprecedented what we're about to see. Uh, historic, obviously, on many levels. And uh, it's, it's essentially a sit back and try to relax and enjoy the ride from our vantage point. And watch the best do what they do. And now the, the schedule was kind enough to grace us with essentially a position round matchup to start things off here. Shannon Pluhowski, who currently took over the top spot, as we said, is going to be taking on Shannon O'Keefe. Just so happens to be the one-two matchup here. Uh, obviously, we have the position round later today, but uh, this is the top tier match. We So this is where we're going to start our other matchup, Sherry Tan, who sits in third. So the top three all happen to be uh, on the same two pairs of lanes where we can capture them and break them down uh and she's taking on misaki mukutani uh from japan so some great matchups to kick off the telecast here of course on boltv.com you can watch every match across the house uh so all 24 competition lanes available to view uh we do have a third member of the broadcast crew today the hall of famer carolyn dorn valor is back to join us here on bold tv she was uh, kind enough to join us last night for the show. We had a lot of fun, uh, a lot of good times, and got to watch a lot of great bowling to kind of set all this up. And she is back today, so let's uh, let's welcome her in. CDB, how's it going? Going okay. How are you guys? We are doing well. 
Good. You're all right. Can you, you, you can hear me, right? You can hear me, right? Just check loud it. and clear, loud and yeah, clear. Sometimes yep. when it comes to the earbud things, you know, I'm not very good at it. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed watching in and out this afternoon, you know, while I was uh, going to a few appointments. And I like how you said that so calmly. You you were very excited when you started. And then, Aaron, you got really serious and you went <laughs> 51 pins between one through fifth. And that was great. There was such a build up there. But, you know, that's what the U.S. Open is all about, is that close um, that close race because the lanes are tough. We've talked about that the entire event. But what I noticed was the match play record besides the bowling. And we talked about that yesterday, mm -hmm. but uh, Valerie, I'm sorry, Shannon O'Keefe up to 10 matches, Valerie at 11 and three and two. And right underneath her, Josie Barnes, 10 6 0. Oh, those 30 pins bonus when you're shooting a 240 is huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge when you're not shooting a 240 because it tries to keep you basically where you're at. But when you're shooting 240 or a 260 with 30 pins and picking up 90, you're going to shoot up the ladder really quickly. We've seen players do that throughout the course of the block. Uh, once again, Valerie's kind of been the one who's taken advantage of that the most. Uh, sh she's had, uh, you know, we've kind of been tracking the scores through these two rounds, and uh, not too many players have even been plus through these rounds. Uh, mm -hmm. So a lot of sub-200 averages. She's the only competitor so far to go 100 over in each of the two match play rounds. So she has found something she likes on this 42-foot condition. She's made right. a great adjustment from round four uh, where she fell back a few spots into 22nd place. So she has gotten comfortable. She's thrown a lot of strikes and uh, now in position to make a second TV show at the USWO after making it as a non-member in 2017. She finished fourth that year. But uh, plenty of uh, plenty of great competitors in the mix as well. And uh, we're going to be talking about that all night here on BoldTV.com until we get down to that position round, that final game, and determine our top five for the show. Uh, we're going to go full screen right here before we uh, dive into the action a little bit more. So... There we go. But uh, myself, Emil, and CDB will be around throughout the course of the block to uh, just have a good time with you. Keep track of the scores and uh, break things down as they make their way through the route. Well, you know, we talked about it last night that uh, Valerie was kind of turning that corner. And mm -hmm. together some games might have managed to carry it over here. I mean, to me, what I saw earlier, uh, if, if her ball's online going down or uh, at, at release point, uh, everything is, is a go. You know, and I think that's been true for, for most about everyone. If, if you miss it right just a hair, there's a uh, the tendency for the ball down lane to not recover. And we see a lot of the 2-8, right. the 2-4. Uh, uh, two, four, 10, two, four, eight, 10 type combinations. Uh, so if we can limit those. Well, I think what you've also seen too is like a shot by Danielle McEwen there to the left is when the ladies have seen that type of reaction, they've either uh, chosen to combat that two ways because I still do feel the ladies try to stay as far right as possible. They either continued to move further right, or as we saw yesterday, some tried to combat that motion where with that little miss to the right, the ball, if it had enough surface on it, would actually grab the end of the pattern and at least get up to the head pin. So there are two ways they were combating that. Still seeing uh, plenty of surface. Uh, I know Sean had told me this morning that uh, some of the, the Storm players even put some shine on a few bowling balls to help kind of blend the lanes out later if necessary. Mm -hmm. And it, it definitely looks like uh, we got to a, a situation where CDB just didn't look like players had a lot of room at all. No. And one of the things a lot of, uh, I shouldn't say a lot of ladies, but some of the ladies have been using is, and here's a good tip for people who are watching they'll take a bowling ball and let's usually it's the middle of the road or maybe a higher rg bowling ball and put some surface on it say a thousand maybe 500 and then they'll put polish over that and what that does is 
It then, with the polish, allows that ball to still be clean through the front, but it's got some grit underneath it so that it tends to still read that middle part of the lane. So when the lanes do break down, especially in the front, they have that ball that, again, is still a little bit cleaner, but will still be able to grab the lane. A few tricks to the trade, I guess you could say. Those are good tips, though. Something to put a, keep in your back pocket at all times. And not... And not to bring this up, too, because I know we're going to talk about this during the night. But if you look at the top, the top 10 or 12 right now, right? You think about it this way, because I know it's a major championship. It's record breaking in the fact of the first place money. But the girls or the ladies at the top are at the top, right? So they're entering match play already ahead of the field. Those ladies in 6th through ninth and 10th have nothing to lose, right? So they're going to – they should just come out swinging. In other words, you're going to have to take some risks because you have to gain those pins where the ones through 1st through 5th already just have a little bit of a buffer. Yet, on the other hand, you cannot play defense because there's a lot of bonus pins up for grabs. We mentioned the top five, but taking a look down, probably all the way to 12th place with, uh, you know, an outside chance to make a run here, especially yes. with 240 bonus pins available. Uh, Shannon Pluhowski leading the way at plus 608. Shannon O'Keefe at plus 594. Sherry Tan plus 587. Valerie Bersier plus 575. Josie Barnes plus 557. So that's the top five. Stephanie Zavala, 10 pins back, plus 547. Shayna Ung, plus 517. Missy Parkin, plus 512. Danielle McEwen, plus 486. 71 pins back. Diana Zavialova in 10th, plus 439. Brianna Cote, plus 434. And then Clara Guerrero, 134 back of the show, plus 423 in 12th place. And then there's a pretty sizable dip down to 13th place where you'll find six-time champion Liz Johnson at plus 304, 253 pins back. Right. And I, you know, I still don't think 253 pins is is out of reach, especially for somebody like Liz Johnson. But I do think that 134, 123, and 118 for Diana, uh, Brianna, and Clara is extremely doable. It really is. If you, again, if you do what Valerie's been doing with, and I want to just make sure I get the games right, but 244, 238, and a 266 and win, I mean, you're picking up a lot of pins in three games. Speaking of Diana, she's got the front five, as does Stephanie Zavala. And you know, and Neil, we saw that last night. There were some pretty good, pretty good pairs. And then they would move down to a, a different grouping and the scores leveled out just a little bit, which you'll see all the time. Quickly, Zavala has gone from front five to front seven. Oh, wow. That was fast. That was it? Oh, she's <laughs> going 15 and 16. She doesn't waste a lot of time when she gets up there. She uh, she knows what she wants to do. She's taking on Lindsay Boomershine. Uh, Lindsay bowling a good game here, uh, 259 her max score, but uh, right now her opponent, uh, seven for seven. Diana just left a single pin in the sixth frame in her matchup against Daphne Tan. So front five, nine spare for TZ. And both of those players, as we mentioned, uh, certainly within the mix right outside of the top five. Josie Barnes, five out of six in the matchup against Maria Bolanova, her former student athlete at Vanderbilt. I 
15 and 16. It's a really good match overall. The door shine bowling very well to start here, also. I feel like we've seen a, a mixed bag on the fresh. We've seen some good games from players, we've seen some uh, brutal games from, from players as well. And across the board, I, I think you, they've seen it enough times on the fresh now to not get off to that bad start. With the slower starts here from both Shannons, one of them is going to get the win when it's all said and done. Sherry off to a slower start as well, but no one really uh, taking taking that match between her and Masaki. Shayna Ung has a six-bagger after a spare in the first. We mentioned Stephanie Zavala. They are sitting in sixth and seventh. Uh, Josie Barnes having a good game. Valerie Bersier, uh, nothing too crazy yet from her and her matchup against Clara Guerrero. Uh, Clara actually has the lead in that, so I mean, we arguably could have a completely redrawn top five here after game number one. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, you're right with these two matches. It's almost, no, you take it, I'll take it. You take it, I'll take it. <laughs> but again, here's the other thing. Think about this. Shannon and step uh Shannon and Shannon are both in the top five. I mean, your thought process is a little different. You know, I kind of talked about how I would approach it, but there there is that little bit of pressure. I mean, it's gotta be a little bit different, you know, than in years past. Um, I hate to say that people are focused on the money, because I don't I don't really think that's it. I think it's all about the prestige and the title. I do. I think the the Money is a very big added bonus. <laughs> I think you are correct. I'm sorry, uh, Aaron. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to uh, throw it to you and just kind of, kind of tell us the vibe in the uh, in the building here in the early going, how it, uh, how the players are kind of approaching it, and what uh, what's what's like there at Double Decker. Yeah, I, I think uh, CDB is is correct. Uh, for about like 98%. Uh, but there's like a strong, hard 2%. Like a strong 2% that is just enough to make it tense in the build. Uh, right. You know, it, it's that, that 100K is a looming factor. And when that's kind of hanging over your head and you understand what it could mean for someone's life, it's like, okay, well, I, you know, I got to do what I got to do. And it, it's, it's tense in here. It's all, as I said earlier, Aaron, it's only going to get tense, especially as this night goes on. Not quite cut it with a knife, but it, we're getting close. Josie has continued to strike. She has seven out of eight, uh, looking good on her way to victory against Maria. Zavala did not strike in the eighth. And she actually has a chance to uh, shoot 250 and lose this match. Uh, Lindsay Boomershine is getting ready to step up in the 10th and shoot 259. The best Zavala can get is 256. This should be a pretty crazy way to uh, to not get the bonus pins right out of the gates. You know what? Uh, that's that's one of the other things. It's you know there are 24 competitors still out here. There are some players who will not have an opportunity just because of this. I mean, they're, they're too far back. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you get down to playoff time and you got the teams where you're playing and they, they want to spoil it. I'm not saying that that's the case here, but, you know, no one's laying laying down and saying, all right, I'm going to just give you 30 bonus picks. You still got to earn it. <laughs> you mean everyone's trying? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, the prize fund in general is different than usual. So um, in regard to what you just said, I think everyone is trying every shot because there's more money in 12th than there is in 22nd. There's more money in 15th than there is in 18th. You know, so w whatever it be. Yeah. Uh, I First off, they're all competitors anyway. I don't think anybody gives up. Sure. So uh, I, I definitely think that's in them because of, of who they are and why they're out there doing what they love. But going back to the point we've already mentioned, uh, this this prize fund and that added top prize has definitely changed the, and I like the word you used, changed the vibe in the building. Yeah. 
Chaina Ung can still shoot 269. She's going to record a victory over Danielle McEwen. Lindsay did not get the second hit in the 10th, so she is going to shoot 247. But that means Zavala still needs to get the double. Uh, let's see if we can head over there real quick, see if she can uh, lock that up. So we'll be coming right back here in just a sec, folks. So you'll see Stephanie Zavala on the far right of your screen coming in in a moment. Going to need a double. First shot of the 10th. Mm. I think they call that picture perfect. I like the sound of that CDB. Does anybody know what the 8-1 was by chance? Not that it matters. I was just wondering, was it a 7-10 or? I did not see it. No? Okay. I was just. Because with all the strikes in the ninth spare, it doesn't seem as if she's been out of the pocket. So I'm assuming it might have been a pocket split. We'll give it to the Bull TV crew. Those <laughs> who may have been watching Stephanie Zavala's entire match, do you know what she left in the eighth frame? Oh, yeah, that chat was helpful yesterday. They know everything. And now they know Stephanie just needs to keep it on the lane here after delivering the big time double. Yep. Certainly, uh, certainly, certainly performing beyond her years, uh, considering she's a rookie on tour. Would not think it with the way Stephanie Zavala has performed this season. Talk about a huge 30 pins out of the gate she's going to walk away with. On top of that, 256 or 254. Just like that, she's back in the top five. Uh, Scott and Corey said she loved it 810. Oh, okay. I, well, I figured it had to be in the pocket because it didn't. It didn't seem as if she was all over the place, as you could, as you could uh, see. And those two shots in the tenth were right on target. Much better start for uh, Stephanie too, as compared to this morning on the fresh. Only she went one seventy eight, one ninety three first couple, uh, but she was solid on the fresh last night, two twenty eight, two twenty three. O'Keefe is going to go ahead and take that victory over Shannon Bluhowski, just a matter of final score. O'Keefe's going to be in the 220s, so she's going to overtake Bluhowski. For uh, additional context for you, CDB, Scott says it was a, it was a light hit for Stephanie, and it should have been a 2 8 and the 2 fell. I gotcha. So this pattern they've been bowling on, they bowled on it for the eight games before match play. And then the three rounds of match play, correct? That is correct. This is the uh, fourth time they've gotten to see it. So you may see on the good pairs, you may see higher scores because they, they're used to what balls they've been using and what reaction they've been seeing. I would think there's some comfort level, and especially I, I'm sure these ladies are charting the pairs. So knowing that one pair might be a little tougher, one lane hooks more, one's a little tighter. Adjustments might be a little quicker. Mm -hmm. 
Big 10th frame here for Missy Park, and if she can find a double, she'll take away some of those bonus pins. She's in eighth place at the moment. Taylor Baltis getting to 174. Max 183 for Missy. First shot of the 10th. It's not going to get it. Some other updates from players in the top five. Josie Barnes, 229 in victory. Valerie Bersier is going to lose her match. She can max out at 199. I thought, 237 and the win for Shayna Ung. I thought uh, Josie had seven out of eight strikes at one point. Is that right? Was I wrong on that one? Maybe I was. No, that's correct. Uh, but she opened the ninth frame. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Opened the ninth and then uh, spare in the tenth. Tenth. Okay, gotcha. I had to add that up. I thought it was a frame off. Gotcha. Sherry Tan's going to get a victory. Matter of final score against Masaki Mukutani. 224 to 163. Shannon O'Keefe ahead of Shannon Puhowski. And folks, as we wrap up this game here, uh, friendly reminder, if you've been watching all along, to the folks watching on BowlTV.com, hello. Great to see you all again. We look forward to these final seven games to determine the top five here for the CBS Sports Network Finals with you tonight. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, after the conclusion of this game, we are going to uh, quit sending the stream to those platforms, so it will be exclusively on BoldTV.com. So you do have to pick up a subscription to watch the final seven games. Uh, if you want to do that and just buy the event ticket to watch live, that's going to be eight ninety five. If you want to pick up a monthly recurring subscription, that's going to be nine ninety five. Or you can pick up an annual recurring subscription. The best way to support the PWBA seventy nine ninety five. Transaction fees do apply for all three. So if you do pick up that subscription, not only do you get to watch, you get to uh, hang out in the Bull TV chat. It's a great community of folks who uh, just love bowling, love chatting about bowling, having a good time, breaking things down as uh, as the rounds progress. But uh, we also have giveaways here. And a little bit later tonight, we are going to be giving away a Storm Bowling Ball of choice to one lucky Bowl TV viewer. So the only way you can win is by checking the action out on BowlTV.com. So we certainly hope to see you there. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, take a quick reset for the folks watching on Bowl TV. So we'll see you in game two here in round three of match play at the 2021 U.S. Women's Open. For the folks watching on Facebook and YouTube, this is goodbye for right now, but hopefully we get to see you over at Bull TV. But folks, we'll be right back from the U.S. Women's Open. <laughs> 